NHK conducted a survey to find out what people in Japan think of the proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership free trade deal. The poll also asked them about restarting some nuclear reactors in the country. More than 1,000 people took part over the phone last weekend. 31% said they support Japan's participation in the TPP. 14% said they don't approve. 45% were undecided. NHK asked people's opinions on nuclear plants. All of the country's 48 commercial reactors are offline. Authorities will allow facilities that meet new safety standards to resume operations. 20% of respondents said they support restarting them. 45% were opposed. The people who oversee the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are under pressure after a series of mistakes. In the latest, workers pumped radioactive water into the wrong building. Water injected to cool the melted nuclear fuel becomes highly contaminated. Crews then send it to storage buildings before it's processed. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials have blamed four pumps for misdirecting about 200 tons of water. They said on Monday the pumps should have been out of use. <laughs> They said on Monday the pumps should have been out of use. <laughs> TEPCO representatives say workers will be interviewed if necessary. They've disclosed little about the latest problem, including why an investigation was only started a day after the incident. A similar case happened in February when more than 100 tons of contaminated water leaked from a tank after a valve was left open. Officials spoke with about 100 employees but have yet to find out exactly what happened. You have your colander in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ZD. Local authorities have criticized the utility for a series of problems and their failure to pinpoint the causes. So but what I love about this story is you think to yourself as a rational person, who would be monumentally stupid enough to think that that made sense? <laughs> come, come back to me. No, just, 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 just give, this is much more important one, one, because one, you, two, everybody one, can become one, infertile one, in one generation. One sound I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are, that, that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout, uh, not the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation, but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, 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 you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so the, the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the the sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago which showed that Israeli men had, had very low sperm count and that over the previous 10 years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate, by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. 
It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah, uh, and uh, mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with the, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're bought. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West they probably find these things and they bought them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, it, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, of 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk, when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like th throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who work for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I've studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all the, we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected, and it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay, because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Japan's population declined in 2013 for a third straight year. Meanwhile, the number of people aged 65 or over is increasing. This age group now accounts for a quarter of the total population. The Internal Affairs Ministry released its latest population estimates on Tuesday. The population was about 127 million as of October 2013. That's down 217,000 from the previous year. The number of people considered to be working age, or 15 to 64, was about 79 million. This is down about 1.2 million from the previous year. Baby boomers born in the 1940s are turning 65 or older. This figure is below the 80 million mark for the first time since 1981. The number of people aged 65 or older was about 32 million. This is up 1.1 million from the previous year. They now make up 25% of the entire population for the first time since 1950. 
The number of people aged 0 to 14 was about 16.4 million, down 157,000 from the previous year. They account for 13 percent of the population, a record low. The ministry says the population will likely continue to decline due to Japan's aging society and low birth rate. Fishermen near Tokyo have been filling their nets with a seasonal delicacy. They've been catching young sardines known as white bait. These fishermen cast their nets about 500 meters off the coast. They caught more than 100 kilograms of the tiny fish. The season for white bait began a month, about a month ago, but initial catches were below average. Is Japanese carp on the brink of extinction? But how could this be possible? They're so common in Japan. Please take a look at this. These are some of the endangered species in Japan. There's the golden eagle and the black kokeni. I see. I heard that fish that could only survive in clear waters are in danger due to pollution. But common carp can survive in murky water, so it's hard to believe that they're endangered. A former U.S. intelligence chief has welcomed the possibility of Japan exercising its right to collective self-defense. Dennis Blair spoke to NHK World in Tokyo. Blair served as director of national intelligence. He was also the head of the U.S. Pacific Command. He commented on Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's push to reinterpret the Japanese Constitution. Past Japanese governments have maintained the Constitution does not allow the right to collective self-defense. The restrictions on Japanese military uh, actions uh, related to Japan's past and past agreements, I think, need to be gradually adjusted to address the new realities. Blair pointed out the threat of North Korean missile attacks as a key issue in East Asia. He discussed the possibility of the use of radar and communication systems to intercept North Korean weapon launches. From the military point of view, it is very difficult and makes no sense to try to to try in the heat of battle to say well Japan you can shoot that missile but the United States you have to shoot that one and Blair also spoke about Japan's newly enacted state secrecy law he said before the legislation the US limited information it shared with Japan but stronger protection could deepen bilateral relations Top envoys from China and the US are trying to figure out a plan for dealing with North Korea they met to discuss how to respond to recent provocations by leaders in Pyongyang Wu Dawei and Glenn Davies held three hours of talks in New York Wu chairs the six-party talks on the North's nuclear program the talks have been stalled since 2008 Authorities in North Korea last month fired a series of rockets and missiles, including two ballistic missiles that flew toward the Sea of Japan. Members of the UN Security Council condemned the launches. Officials in the North responded by saying they may conduct new forms of nuclear tests. They're believed to have confirmed that Chinese and U.S. officials will urge the North to exercise restraint. The envoys are scheduled to meet two more times this week.